Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. A lot of people are really in love with my instant Legolas devices that I've made for long bows, for micro compounds, for all kinds of bows. Just because it, it allows this super high rate of fire, like so. <laughs> A lot of people want to buy one. Only problem is that I so far have not been able to find a manufacturer who would be willing to build it. And therefore I've decided to make one at home. A true homemade bow using rubber in a way that everybody can do it. And of course I added a few little mean extras as is common here at the Slingshot channel. <laughs> Let me show you what I came up with. Meet the Sling War Bow. <laughs> Let me show you its features. Well, first of all, you can see that I've made this powered by rubber because not everybody, actually very few people are able to make a good self bow from like wood or PVC or something. So therefore I decided rubber is best for this purpose also because it's totally scalable. This for example is using two Thera uh, tube black bands per side, which means that it will have about 45 pounds of draw force just fine for this small bow and powerful enough to accelerate these little bolts. Yeah, as you see I'm using the broadhead versions and of course I selected them because they're super inexpensive and can be bought on Amazon. I put all the links down below for you. So you can buy these on Amazon. They are small enough to be um, uh, lightweight and compact. Okay, but of course here in my, in my one I'm using broadheads. You can fire both just because the broadheads are really like small daggers. See, this is one of these broadhead arrows. They are really like small daggers, flying daggers, very sharp. So even at a comparably low energy, what you can achieve with an easy to draw uh, rubber based bow, um, these are definitely, definitely lethal. <laughs> and uh, of course, also to spice it up a little bit, I added nine inch nails. Yeah, Trevor Resnick will probably love that. Uh, should he be one of my fans, I'd be glad to send him a bow like this. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you have these 9 inch nails, which are of course not necessary, but they are really, really handy. Because with this one, you can actually use it, once you run out of ammo or in between, you can use it to, also like a bayonet, but you can also use it like sideways, like this. And since this bow can also be fired sideways, like so, or so, or so, you are actually totally flexible in what you can do. So you can go ahead and, you know, stab your opponents, swing it so nobody can come close, and then pump a few arrows into uh, the uh, approaching mass of uh, enemies. The magazine, as always, is uh, controlled by a lever that is spring-loaded, and um, it holds uh, seven bolts. Actually, it can even hold eight, but the manufacturer only recommends seven. <laughs> Insider joke. In any case, um, the also what I've put, I put a shelf on here. And you can see the shelf from below. This means that it was just large enough so I could, careful with this, so I could attach a Picatinny rail for the red dot sight. Since the sight is very, very interesting for a bow, I believe. A specifically one that you can hold on target because you can control it from the rear end. But question is, how does it shoot? Well, let's uh, let us uh, send some arrows down range. Okay, I switch on the red dot side. And now, as, you, as I said, you can draw it this way, but you can also draw it this way. So, of course, here the magazine would be in the way. Therefore, this one is actually preferred. So, let's pull it out. And as you see, the band slip right underneath the bolts. You hear the typical click click. Now I can aim and shoot. And of course I can do this again and again and faster if I want to. Oh, that was a little bit too fast. I forgot to aim right. <laughs> As you see, it's super easy to shoot. You can also easily shoot instinctively if you want to. Um, and uh, at 45 pounds, these have quite some energy. All right, yes, you can see they penetrated almost all the way into the archery mat. Let's compare. Let's pull one out that's been shot in from one of these uh, micro compound bows. 
So that's the penetration. And as you see, the penetration is very comparable, almost exactly the same. And this has been shot from a $250 compound bow. And this has been shot from a rubber-based bow that probably cost you $10 in materials. And here you can see the one that I didn't shoot into the foam. As you can see, it lodged itself very, very deeply into the wood, even though it's not in parallel to the fiber direction. Okay, but it survived just fine. So as I said, you can also shoot the bow sideways, which gives you the, first the advantage that, of course, your opponent are in reach of the sideways uh, nine inch nails, but it also makes it possible to fire it from this side. So like so, bang. Or of course you can go like this, sick. <laughs> and of course you can still go like this. So you have all these techniques that you can use. And then of course you can attack or attack like so. So you have a lot of flexibility. And from this position, of course, you can always attack someone like so and then pump a few bolts into your opponents. Bang! <laughs> of course, or switch back to the vertical position at any time and let fly a little bit more. All right, so that was six bolts in the target. Let us complete it with uh, number seven. Bang! <laughs> Even though I did not aim, my hits are actually quite good and I would not have missed an opponent. So some questions and answers about this. First, um, how much does it cost to make one of these? Well, it's really inexpensive. Like the most expensive piece is the red dot side, which sets you back at around, I don't know, you can get some for $15, I guess. Uh, but it's of course not absolutely necessary. You can also use any other sighting system or just shoot instinctively. Then you have to have some plywood. Uh, it can be any plywood, it doesn't really need to be some fancy expensive stuff. Uh, we just make it thicker if it's too weak. Um, and of course also um, you will need the 9 inch nails, obviously. You need some rubber. The material cost, as I said, is probably around $10 plus the red dot. Second question, are there blueprints? Well, I am not an engineer and uh, I can't really do any drawings, at least not technical drawings. So therefore what I did is I photographed all the parts uh, together with rulers and put them into the PDF that you can download from my Facebook page, <laughs> link down below. And the reason why I can't put the link in here is because YouTube's stupid algorithm that if you link to something that helps you making a weapon, it is like boo, boo, boo and no go. In any case, um, uh, so if there is someone who is able to turn my photos into a blueprint that would be really cool and i would give that person a fat shout out <laughs> third question people always ask why is there no buttstock well first of all none is needed because these things don't have any serious recoil and you can fix them just with your hand so it's very simple but the biggest reason is that you would not be able to hold back to it if there would be a buttstock you would not be able to grab the string fourth question why no mechanical part like a pump action grip or something? I tried this, it doesn't work. Since the problem is that you need to get very close to the string here. But if you hold it like this, it will start to cant. And even if you use roller bearings and stuff, the friction actually makes drawing so hard that it's stupid. Just the quickest way is just to use your fingers. And you can wear gloves if that is more comfortable for you. Fifth question. So is this not just another crossbow? It's not a crossbow because it doesn't have a trigger. It doesn't have a lock. Actually, um, this is still a bow. It's just a bow with a magazine. That's all it is. And of course, some nine inch nails. <laughs> then how important is the length here? Well, I decided to go for this length because I found it really easy to still aim with it. Uh, it could be a little longer, I guess. I don't think it would have made much difference in power. Um, but of course, you can vary the length uh, because it's rubber. There is no rule. Just uh, keep in mind that if you take off the rubber bands like this, this is the relaxed length. You should not stretch it out more than five times this much. So this is probably 10 centimeters. You can stretch it out to 50 centimeters if it's fully cocked. But you shouldn't go beyond this because otherwise your rubber will die very quickly. And of course, um, the shorter the bands here, the more they stretch, the harder the draw. So I set this up to 45 pounds, but of course if I would remove two of them, 
then the draw will be considerably lighter, but the bow would of course still shoot, just not very powerful anymore. Then the inevitable exchangeable magazines or stripper clips. I've made stripper clips for magazines like those and that works, but it is also mechanically kind of challenging. The still the clips are kind of uh, bulky, so I like it this way. And a lot of people say, uh, yeah, but then you need to count the reloading into the shot rate. Well, don't forget that like uh, lever action guns or even pump guns have a, a, a magazine that can't be filled with a clip or something either. And there were still superior weapons. So I don't think that a exchangeable magazine or a clip is all that important. And of course, this I call this a war bow, but of course it's really for fun. This is not to go into war. It's just to you know be able to make something at home that shoots well and that can give you some joy. So what kind of tools do you need to make this? Basically what you need is a very cheap saw, like an electric saw, like um, Actually, fixed saws are not ideal for it because the piece is too long. And so usually like on a band saw and so on, you wouldn't be able to do this. The hardest part is to get the slot right. The slot should not be too thin and it should not be too wide because otherwise the arrows will fall out. So this here requires some precision saw work, specifically since you need to cut it into a total of five pieces of wood. The innermost layer and then also the outer layers. And uh, so this is a five layer uh, setup. Then people ask me what about the Archer's Paradox. There is no Archer's Paradox in this here. First of all, the bolts are very, very short, so there's not a lot of room for them to flex. But also because this shoots right through the riser. See, this is where the arrow comes out. So therefore, there is no like sideways det uh, 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 detraction or something. You know, what happens is that it shoots straight. And that's what I love about it. Everything is just in a perfectly straight line here. So this is uh, the beauty of a bow that is uh, shot through. Then is it really necessary that this bow is so thick? No, you could make it a lot thinner. You could also put holes in if you wanted to, uh, looking quite cool. I just did it that way because this is also a weapon to, to be swung. So if you wanted that, then of course you need stability in the wood here, since it works like an ax a little bit. <laughs> Therefore, I decided to make it a little thicker. But of course, you're completely free to redesign. Just make sure that you have enough room here so that you don't need an arm protection. Otherwise, you know, the rubber bands will hit your arm and that could be painful. Why does it click twice? Well, the answer is quite simple. See, these are spring loaded. And as you see, the pressure is applied here towards like the last third of the arrow. So when I draw this out, what happens is that the string, of course, gets underneath the arrow like so. And what's now happening, let me see if this focuses, is, see it puts the arrow up into the skyward, so the tip is pointing up. At some point that changes. See now the tips are down and the rear end is up. And then of course comes the point where the entire, uh, with the last click, the entire bolt falls down and is now in the shooting position. So dimension wise, if you compare the two, then you will see that actually my little bow is a little bit shorter than the micro bow that I, that I used for a comparison. And in order to achieve the same energy, it needs a little bit more uh, draw weight. So this one has a lower draw weight and still shoots quite hard. But that is because it's using modern materials and compound wheels. So, uh, of course, if you want to go conventional, uh, just using rubber, you need to invest a little more muscle energy since it's not that efficient. Okay, <laughs> my micro rubber based war bow. I hope you like it because I do. And I hope that you like this video since <laughs> that's it for today. Thanks and bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, once more, just for you. Bye-bye. <laughs>